Well, good day and welcome back and welcome to episode three of Tassie. Places we're going to have a look at in this episode include Mole Creek and then on to Strawn and the Gordon River and then up to Derwent Bridge and Lake St. Clair and then finally push on through to the Mountfield National Park and we did some sensational walks up in the Mountfield National Park. That was just amazing. So go and grab yourself a cuppa or a glass of wine or a beer and sit down and I hope you enjoy episode three. So we're at a little place called Gowrie Park, which is about 45, 50 kilometers from um, Cradle Mountain on the way to a beautiful little town called Sheffield. And we thought we'd just stop here. It got some good reviews uh, on Wiki, but it's not really a great spot. It is so tight, really, really tight. I mean, it's spectacular. I don't know if you can see the mountains in the background there. I'll just spin around this way as well. There are some beautiful mountains here. We're hoping to do a, um, a climb up one of them tomorrow. But uh, this is where we're parked. Have a look at this. So that's, there's not even enough room to put the awning out without um, landing ourselves in the back door of the bloke next to us. So tomorrow we're going to go and do King Solomon's Caves. That's um, a drive through the mountains. It takes about half an hour from here. And that's meant to be pretty specky. So looking forward to that. And then we might do a bit of exploring because the countryside is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. As I said, have a look at this with the sun going down. Beautiful. Right out. Go and have a glass of wine. Today we're doing the King Solomon's Cave tour. tour. <laughs> we don't do too many tours. I said that last time we did a tour. But this is meant to be a pretty specky cave. Beautiful drive in from where we were staying. It's just gorgeous through the mountains. Absolutely stunning. Okay, let's see what this is all about. So that was King Solomon's Cave. How was that? It was spectacular. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. I'll stick some photos up. It was um, yeah, really good. And the guide was Shannon. Sh was it Shannon? She was so good compared to our Sergeant Major from the, from the Mount, Gambia. Uh, Mount Gambia Cave tour. Far out. But yeah, she was wonderful. That was really good. So if you're in the area, just near Mole Creek, come and do King Solomon's Cave. It is beautiful. It's like a fairy tale. <laughs> so just in Mole Creek, this is the Mole Creek Hotel and apparently we're in Tiger Country. Keep our eyes open. Looking for a coffee shop. So this is a little spot that the tour guide mentioned when we we're doing the cave tour this morning. Um, Alan Cliffs, she said it was definitely worth a visit. So it's only a short walk. Lisa tells me 800 metres. One of Tasmania's 60 great short walks. There is no doubt that there is no shortage of trees in Tasmania. Everywhere we've been in this northwestern corner has been very heavily forested. It's absolutely spectacular. Wow. It's, a, it's an impressive little vista, that's for sure. How beautiful is that? So the story is that the, you might be able to see just down here the red cliffs. Apparently the local indigenous women used to come here and mine ochre, which was very highly sought after. And the uh, local indigenous people used to cover themselves in ochre, rub it on their skin and in their hair when they were doing the um, corroboree celebrations. Have a look at this place. We're in a little town called Chudley, which is not far from Mole Hill. But wait till I show you inside. So 
So have a look at this place. They have 40 different flavors of honey here. And I think I've found my favorite, honey chocolate. Look at this. They've got fruit honeys, chocolate honeys. They're all delicious. And there's even more through here. Check this out. I am a huge honey fan. I love my honey, but this place is just paradise for me. This is really cool. Even got a glass beehive. Oh wow, look at this. So here, these are all bees. This is a beautiful place. So, lucky we didn't have any lunch. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of walking, so we need some need some oh, sugar. There we go. Lisa's got her little treat. I've got mine. We're all happy. The Melita Honey Farm at Chudley, <laughs> just out from Mole Creek. Great spot. We're just out of uh, Mole Creek. Is it Mole Creek or Mole Hill? Mole Creek, I think, um, at a National Park camping area. And we've been told that there's a cave at the end of this track that goes in under the mountain. But it's a flooded cave, so you've got to walk through the water, which is probably about four degrees. And we don't really have cold weather appropriate wet weather foot footwear. So we've got to put on the old trandles, our tropical trandles, <laughs> and uh, see how we go. So anyway, the entrance is just up here a bit further. Here we are in the cave. You're not going to see a great deal. Let's turn around and look back the other way. Is that? <laughs> the water is pretty chilly. We're about 50, 50, 60 metres into the cave now. A couple of beautiful formations just here. Look at this one here is stunning. Oh, I thought you were talking about me. Hmm. Well, stunning. I wouldn't Thank call you. you a formation, but <laughs> keeps going around the corner. Oh, yeah, look at that. Shine on this formation here, Liz. Have a look at that. That's just gorgeous. Amazing. I'll have a little look up here. There we go, back at the entrance. That was so cool. <laughs> we'll um, stick some photos in there. I don't know how well it's going to come up on the GoPro, but we'll stick some photos in. It is just a beautiful cave. But apparently down the stream continues down and it actually runs into a couple of more caves just down the other end of the park. So we might have a uh, venture down there. I'm not sure what those caves are like. But that was fantastic. Bring your gum boots because the water is freaking freezing. Yeah, it is very cold. Have a look at this place. It just looks like paradise. Look at this. If that's not a scene out of Jurassic Park, I don't know what is. That is just so beautiful. Look at that. That's incredible. Audio. So this is where we are. The Mole Creek Karst National Park. Karst is actually a word used to describe the uh, cave formations. It's interesting that the Mole Creek Karst National Park emblem is a giant spider. Mole Creek is also the home of the Tasmanian tiger, or the ex-home of the Tasmanian tiger. As you come through Mole Creek, there's Tassie tiger stuff everywhere, so... I'm not sure whether this is where the last one was sighted or 
what the history there is, but obviously there is some. Okay, let's have a look. We're just going to have a look into the entrance of this second cave. That's cool. Doing a bit of spelunking. Good morning. What a beautiful morning. Have a look at this. Not a cloud in the sky. Beautiful clear day. I'll just go for a walk down here. This is a pretty magic little campsite this. The Mole Creek Karst National Park. Karst as in K-A-R-S-T I think it is. But um, have a look at this. What a beautiful day. It is glorious. I'm going to take you up to my favourite drop dunny. The only thing wrong with this drop dunny is they've got it, the door on the wrong side. The door should open on the other side so you could sit there and look out at that vista. Beautiful. Freezing cold though, as you get when you have nice clear skies. This morning it must have been only three or four degrees. It was very, very chilly. Glorious. Absolutely glorious. The only thing I wish I could do is jump in and have a swim, but after walking through that water in the cave yesterday, that's not going to be an option. It is very cold, that water. Okay, well, I might go back and uh, have some brekkie. We'll get ready and go for our walk to the waterfall. That is just such a beautiful vista. So this morning we are walking up the road and we're going up to the Westmoreland Falls which um, I think the road's only a kilometre or so. Uh, two k's. On the road? Yeah. And then two k's in on the falls? Yeah. Oh, it's a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. But it is a stunning day today, stunning morning. Have a look at the beauty in this place, just here. She's not watching. Oh. <laughs> it is just beautiful. A beautiful morning for a walk. So it's a two kilometer walk from the campsite to the start of the walking trail. Half of it is nice and level, half of it is nice and steep. So it's a bit of a workout. So what did that take us? 30 minutes, 30 minutes to walk up. And we're at the start of the trail. So this is it here, the Westmoreland Falls walking track. Two hours return. If you're coming to Tassie, you need to do some training. We uh, we did a fair bit at Four Mile. There was a nice hill that was about a five kilometre return trek and about a kilometre and a half of that was up a pretty steep hill. So we did that probably five days out of seven just to try and get ready for it. But uh, yeah, don't come in here cold because... Have you made that much difference? Well, you never know. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll be puffing a lot more. But yeah, if you're uh, keen on walking, do a little bit of uh, a bit of training before you get here because you don't want to be missing out on some of these walks just because you're not fit enough to do them because they are really stunning. And there's not many that are level. No, not one. <laughs> okay, let's go. Have a look through the... Uh, or have a look for the waterfalls. We're in Tassie Tiger Country, apparently. So I've got Lisa on the lookout for them. How nice would it be to spot a Tassie tiger? Not thinking of the royalties for the footage or anything. Purely for its historical value. Oh, Lisa's got one. Tassie tiger. It's a Tassie patty melon. I don't think we're there yet. I think it's up that way a bit further, yeah. How cool is this? We're in tropical North Queensland. I'd have a swim down there, but being as though we're in Tasmania and last night's temperature probably dropped to about four degrees. <clears throat> I don't know. Might have to. Might just have to stick my toes in first. There I think. it is. There's waterfalls. How pretty is that? I also somebody did mention about keeping an eye out for fossils in the rocks at the base of the waterfalls. Check these out. 
fossils here, they're everywhere. It's amazing. When we were on the Arthur River cruise, we found out about the difference between fern tree she ferns and he ferns. And this one is a he fern because he's got a big fat trunk and uh, he's quite smooth. But the other interesting thing is that um, they grow about one centimetre a year. So if you say I'm 180, so if you say that's 200, and then he'd go for another, gee, good on one and three quarter metres above me as well. So it's about 375 years old, this old fella. Pretty cool. So that's it. That was a really nice walk. So it took us 45 minutes to get in here at a nice gentle pace. We weren't racing in or dawdling too much. So um, 45 minutes in, 45 minutes back, about an hour and a half return, plus whatever time you want to spend at the falls. And um, it's a reasonably undulating track. There's some big ups and big downs, but all in all, it's a really nice walk. I mean, how could you say it's not? Look at that. So we're pulling out of the uh, Mole Creek Crust National Park. Honeycomb Caves. Honeycomb Caves and what was the waterfall? Westmoreland. Westmoreland waterfalls. It was a beautiful place. It was stunning. absolutely stunning. 10 out of 10. Yeah, it would say a free camp, Parks and Wildlife free camp, so you just need to have your National Parks pass to get in. But the scenery is sensational. The caves are very exciting. Waterfall walk was lovely. Could not fault that place, it was just gorgeous. Well, it's only had one problem, no platypuses. No platypuses. We had a creek running behind the camp, campfire. Yeah. It lots was... of lovely people. Well, not lots, but <laughs> a few lovely people. A few lovely people. There's only about probably three or four other campers in there while we were there the whole time, so. It was great. So, um, Mole Creek, if you're looking for it, you'll find it on Wiki. It is definitely worth a stop. Absolutely beautiful place. So we're into Mole Creek now and we're going to go and get ourselves a coffee and then we're heading towards Tula. Tula? Tula, which is on the way to Strawn. So we've got a night in Tula and then pushing on to Strawn after that. To see that strange play. <laughs> We're going to do the play, everyone keeps saying, you've got to do the play, the ship that never was, it's a must. So we bit the bullet, we're going to do it. And uh, we'll do the boat cruise on the grey boat. Hopefully we get some nice weather, should be. We've got another few days of nice weather on the way. Should be lovely. Rightio, into Mole Creek for a coffee. Mm -hmm. In the mountains, coming out of Mole Creek. It's the, uh, the only downside of where we've just been is that it's in a magnificent valley. But boy, oh boy, there's some big hills to get into it or out of it. You can go back through Sheffield and then Devonport and do the long way around, but um, the hills are more scenic. But it is a massive hill. Good old Landy here is doing a great job though. We're almost at the top. I think we've got a couple of big switchbacks to get around and then uh, we should be somewhere near the summit. Big switchback here with a car coming around. I can't do that and drive as well, you know. But uh, yeah, it's a um, it's a big climb, a really big climb. How many litres are we doing? We're using about 88 litres per hundred kilometres, climbing up the hill here to get out of uh, get out of the valley. And our average? And uh, normally we do about 20. Okay, uh, and look at these guys. We're complaining, <laughs> and they're riding up here. Uh, wow, well, yeah. they're pushing their bikes. Alrighty, better concentrate, haven't got far to go, we'll be out of here. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of B-roll footage here, um, because I've lost a heap of videos. Somehow, someone must have deleted them by accident. I'm not sure who that was. Anyway, so um, I'll just fill in the gaps. So we traveled from Mole Creek down to Strawn and we stayed at the golf club. Um, there's a parking area just to the side of the golf club. And uh, 
that was pretty good. It can be a bit boggy there. There was a fair bit of mud, but we found a spot sort of at the back um, on a really nice grassy patch and uh, parked up there with another caravan, and it was fantastic. It's uh, 10 bucks a night, so you can't go wrong. There's no power or water, although there is a tap at the first tee, and you can get your caravan in close enough to connect your hoses and fill up your water there if you need to. Or you can just carry a bucket back and top it up as, as needed. Anyway, when we went on the boats, we went on the grey boat. And there's two operators there, the grey boat and the red boats, what most people call them. They do have official company names, but anyway, you'll see them. Grey boat, red boat. So we went on the grey boat. And the only reason we went on the grey boat is that I have a bit of an affiliation with that boat in the fact that I sold the propulsion system into it, the hybrid propulsion system uh, for that vessel. So uh, I was really keen to get on the boat and go for a run and just see how it's all uh, how it's all turning out. And it seems to be that they're very happy with it. So by um, hybrid, it means that when they get in the river, they shut the main diesel engines down and they run purely on electric motors um, as they're cruising up the river. So they have a fairly silent run up the river, um, which is something that they market pretty heavily. And it seemed to be fine. It, looked, it was great. Really nice run up the river. Um, the main difference between the two operators, the grey boat and the red boat, um, is the red boat's a little bit cheaper, but I believe the food on the grey boat for lunch is a little bit better. So they do the same timetable, or the same run, slightly different timetable, but the same run. Um, they're both extremely good operators, without a doubt. So do your research, and you can make your own minds up who you go with there, because we're not endorsing either one of them. <laughs> they're both really good. They get great reviews. And our experience, certainly on the grey boat, was it was fantastic. I have a little trick, though, a little tip for you. If, um, if you're going on the grey boat, you can buy two different seats on the main deck. There's actually an upper deck as well, which is really expensive. But on the main deck, you can pay $199 for the window seats, and they're huge, great big, huge windows. Or you can get the centre rows, and uh, so they don't have a window right beside them, and they're $160 each. However, we ended up in the centre row, but right at the very back of the boat, and the, it's like the very last row, and those seats actually face backwards. And uh, you are sitting right in front of a massive window, and you've got a nice little table in front of you, plenty of legroom. It was fantastic. Just as good a view as the people that are paying $199, but you're only paying $160. I'll show you what I mean. Have a look at this. So we're in the river now, and we're just admiring our fact that we paid for the cheap seats in the middle. They were the only ones available. The only ones available. So we've got the middle row of cheap seats. And yet, have a look at this. That's our view. So we're right at the back, look, backwards, which is stunning. It's good, it's really good. So there you go, it's worth a try. You might have to make a booking, then give them a ring and see if they can allocate those seats to you. I'm not sure whether you can do it or not, but it's worth a try. Um, the other thing that's worth knowing is that you can get up and move around the boat throughout the day. You're not tied to your seat, so you can certainly get up, walk around the cabin. You can't go on that upper deck level, of course they've paid a lot of money. But you can get on the outside deck, on the upper deck, and also up on the roof and um, spend your time outside. Make sure you take a jacket, because when we were out there, it was freezing. Anyway, we had a magnificent day. Oh, the other thing that's worth knowing is keep an eye on the weather. Don't do it on a rainy, miserable day. Just keep an eye on the weather and um, and see if you can time it that you can get a nice day. And that's what we did. We delayed our travel down to Storm by about four days um, because we could see there was some really nice weather coming. So we thought, oh, there's no point going down there if it's not going to be nice. So um, we delayed our, our trip down there until we had a nice weather window. And as you'll see in this footage coming up, it was magnificent. So it's worth doing that if you can, if you've got the time. Keep an eye on the weather. Go down there when it's nice. Anyway, have a look at our trip on the Gordon River and Macquarie Harbour. It was absolutely beautiful, um, and I highly recommend it. It was a really good day out. It's not cheap, but it was really good, and the operators were fantastic. So have a look at this.
Rightio, so there we go. That was Strawn, the Macquarie Harbour and the Gordon River. It is beautiful over there. What a magnificent place. Absolutely worth the trip across to the west coast to go and see that. But pick your weather because I can guarantee you if it's not nice, you're not going to enjoy it. So where are we off to now? From here, we head back to Lake St. Clair and we do a fantastic walk up to Mount Rufus. Um, it was absolutely beautiful. That was a stunning walk. And from there across to the chilly Lake Brady. And uh, we had a couple of nights there at Lake Brady as well. So let's have a look at that. Today we are at Lake St. Clair and uh, we're just doing a little, little walk this afternoon um, up to a place called Platypus Bay. Should be a platypus bay. <laughs> the Parks and Wildlife guy told us that if we're very quiet and patient we'll see a platypus but yeah we'll see how we go. Mm. We've just been to a place called The Wall as in W-A-L-L -L. and uh, it's a guy, an artist that's carved these huge panels, what is meat? Straight ahead. Um, sorry about that. Um, yeah, this artist who's carved these huge pine panels um, depicting the history of Tasmania, basically, or the history of the northwest of Tassie. Um, it is stunning. So uh, we camped at Derwent Bridge, and uh, the wall is just not far from Derwent Bridge, little tiny settlement. Um, but if you're in Tassie, make sure you go and see it. It is absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, you can't take any photos while you're in there. Um, so if you Google it, I'm sure you'll find out the information. 20 bucks ahead to get in. Best way to do it is when you get in, buy yourself a glass of wine and have a wander. It is beautiful. It is so we'll follow this path up to Platypus Bay. See if we can find ourselves a platypus. It's a bit rainy, a bit yucky. Yeah. I've noticed we've got wet weather gear on. So we've got another, we've had some stunning days in Strawn. Absolutely beautiful weather while we were in Strawn. We were so lucky. Uh, but we've got the next four days uh, showery, so just got to make the best of it. Good walking weather. So the overland track is the track that goes from Cradle Mountain overland, believe it or not. Um, and ends up here at Lake Sinclair, or vice versa, depending where you start from. Um, we just saw a bunch of guys had just arrived, had been doing it. They say it takes about five days, I think, to do the whole track, which would be fantastic in the sort of weather we've had the last few days, but not so good in this weather. But it would be quite an achievement, that's for sure. We might even have a crack at it one day. Overland track, we doing that? Yes. Love to. Look at the lichens on these trees, it's just so beautiful. Look at this. That's the maze. Okay, we've been surveying this bit of creek for 15 minutes. Nothing, no platypuses. Looks perfect. If I was a platypus, this is where I'd be. Okay, we might continue around the bay a little bit. See what's around there. But no sign of one here. They continue Behind to elude a platypus wall. We have to be very quiet to see a platypus. <laughs> Unless they're the size of a rhinoceros. I don't think we're going to see much of them. How many? <laughs> None so far. I think we're a bit early. They say the last few hours of light. The light disappears about 8 o'clock. What are we now? 4.30 or something? Might be a bit early for them. Is that Platypus Beach? Just picked up a bit of rubbish on the trail I hate or well, we both hate seeing tissues and bits of paper on the trail let alone nappies and the other crap that people throw down anyway I picked up this uh, bit of rubbish thinking there might have been some really important information on it and it is bacon eggs tomatoes and mushrooms 
Looks like they've already got tamarind, so they don't need that. Anyway, it'll this go into a the... little tribute to the overland track. So it's saying it's uh, 65 to 80 kilometres. I guess it depends on which detours you take. Uh, it takes between six and seven days. 8,000 walkers a year. So it's pretty busy. I mean, every time we've been at uh, Cradle Mountain, every day there was probably 20 or so hikers setting off on the uh, on the track. And then uh, when we arrived here today, there was a whole bunch of them that just arrived. So it's pretty busy up there. Righty -o. Here this is Derwent Bridge. Um, there's not much at Derwent Bridge. There's a hotel across the road here. And then there's the turn off to Lake Sinclair. I think there's a petrol station a little bit further down and that pretty well uh, finishes it. But when we arrived, there's room for probably about 10 caravans in the car park at the hotel. Um, and then if you can't fit in there, there's a car park across the road, directly across the road, which is this one here, which is huge. You'll get 50 caravans in here. And uh, that's where we're parked up just there with some people that we met down at Strawn. Um, and it's it's not too bad. There's a lot of potholes and it's a bit muddy if it's raining, but it's better than nowhere. Um, but the beauty of Derwent Bridge, it's, it's the start of the overland track and um, Lake Sinclair. There's some nice walks around Lake Sinclair. We did uh, the walk yesterday out to Platypus Bay. Didn't see any platypuses. Uh, and today we're going to climb Mount Rufus, which is about a 10 or 11 kilometre hike. So after Derwent Bridge, we're going to push off um, keep heading east or southeast and uh, trying to get down to the Mount Field National Park before Easter. A little bit worried about where we're going to be camped up for Easter, so that's the plan. We'll see how we go. Well, yeah, better get ready. Big hike. Okay, so this is what we're doing today the Mount Rufus Summit. Three hours one way. We're not going to do the circuit, we'll uh, chicken out of that last hour. Three hours one way. So it should be. About 16 kilometres, we think. 15, 16 kilometres. Let's see how we go. That's return, not each way. Rightio, here's the path. Just admiring the moss lined pathway. Along here, it's just gorgeous. So, uh, here's a big old tree. Some of these trees that are falling down here are just gigantic. Some of the ones that are still growing are pretty big as well. But I read um, why a lot of them fall over is because of the rocky soil. They can't get their roots down deep, so they tend to have a very widespread shallow root system instead of a deep root system. Much to their own demise. That's a crack at that one. We're about four kilometers in. An hour and 20 minutes it's taken us so far to do the 4K. Track has been pretty good, a little bit wet in places, a little bit stony, just like this bit here. But all in all, not too bad at all. Just a really gentle sort of a climb so far, nothing too strenuous. Uh oh, we've got an impasse. So we'll uh, push on to about the 6k mark. See how we're traveling at six kilometers, I think. I think it's gonna be about 8k to the top, I reckon. You wish they'd tell us that. It's three hours, but it must know what the distance actually is. They do that a lot over here. They uh, mark their tracks in time and not distance. And we were talking to a ranger out of Arthur River, and she said that's because a lot of people have no concept of distance. So you tell them it's going to be a six kilometre walk, but they don't really know how far six, six kilometres is. So uh, that's why they mark them in time. Because everyone knows what three hours is. How's this tree? Look at that, it looks like a Christmas decoration. Going okay? Have a look at this. Fairly good indication they get a bit of rainfall up here. stunning is that this is um, just beautiful this part of the forest with the mosses and the lichens growing on the trees it's absolutely stunning at least a ruffling in my back pocket I think just after the phone well the uh, vegetation certainly changed a lot in the last 50 meters I think we're getting up to the snow line 
up to about 800 meters in height. And we're just reassessing whether we'll go to the top. It looks from down here, we can see Mount Rufus and it's covered in cloud. So we're just wondering whether it's worth going all the way up there to stare at the clouds. I'm just gonna push on. We'll do the 6K and then we'll have a look at it at the 6K mark. But this vegetation, unbelievable how much it changed basically in 20 steps. You can probably hear puffing and panting. We're going uphill at the moment. Very stringy gums. And these things, lots of these things, whatever they are. Look at this gnarly old thing standing next to the tree. A gorgeous tree. Pine of some sort or conifer of some sort. I'm not sure if it's a hewn pine. I don't think so. It's just beautiful. Look at this, all the knot holes and yeah, there's a bit of rain out there, so um, so it's not often that we don't make it to the end of a trail, but um, we're still about one and a half k from the top. And the top of the mountain is covered in cloud and rain. So we just thought it's not much point pushing up there to get to the top and not be able to see anything. So we pulled out, we went 6K up the trail and turned around about, like I said, I think about a one and a half K from the top. Um, and we'll just make our way back down because it's going to be a little bit slow again down because it is quite wet and slippery. So we just need to be, be very careful. And there was a lovely little bridge over a uh, cascading stream down here, which will make for a lovely little lunch stop. So um, we'll head back down. It's about a kilometre back down the hill. We'll head back down there and have some Here's lunch. a little bit of David Attenborough stuff for you. We um, came across this tree just here and uh, just been torn apart. And I was reading not so long ago about um, the um, yellow-tailed parrots and they'll actually listen to the tree. They'll put their ear against the tree and they can hear the grubs grinding away at the uh, timber inside and then they'll rip the tree apart to get to the grubs. And I would guess that that's exactly what's happened here. There you go. Not just a pretty it's face after lunch stop. We're uh, about just under a kilometre back from where we turned around beautiful cascading stream so we're going to sit here and have ourselves a little bit of lunch back down through the enchanted forest part i just love this bit of this so pretty little stream running at the bottom of it but the moss on everything it's just stunning i'm going to show you something oh. I'm going to show you something very dangerous other than that log um, here in the forest in Tasmania and it's this stuff and the reason it's so dangerous is when it's on the path like this what, what happens is you step on it and then as you swing your other foot through it can't go anywhere and it ends up tripping you up so if you see this stuff over the path just be very careful this has almost had a few tumbles so this is a bit of a mystery to us. We've seen quite a few trees that look like this that have obviously been rubbed by something and they're quite high. So whatever's rubbing them has got to be the size of a kangaroo, you would imagine. But there's been quite a few trees like that. You can see down the bottom here, that's probably from hikers. But um, the rest of it, I'm not too sure. Here's another one of these rubbing trees. Have a look at that. Certainly been worked over, but it's at a funny height. It's too, it's and it's sort of off the path. It wouldn't be hikers rubbing against it because it's kind of off the path a bit. Yeah, interesting. I'd love to know what's uh, what's doing that. So there you go, Mount Rufus walk. It was a beautiful walk, especially the part up through the uh, ferny, mossy valley. That was just absolutely stunning. It was a real shame we didn't get up to the very tip, but the cloud and the rain would have just made it 
unpleasant to say the least and we still had six kilometers to get back down the hill again so um, it was a big day turned out to be just over 13 kilometers that whole walk but it was a stunner absolute stunner so if you're in the area of Lake St Clair and you're keen on climbing hills go and have a look at Mount Rufus it was beautiful so I think I might wrap it up there this uh, video has been going on quite a while sorry about that uh, we still haven't got to the Mountfield National Park and that is a stunner of a place and um, we did a couple of beautiful walks there and they deserve their own airtime, so I don't want to cut them short. So they'll have to wait till the next episode. So thanks for joining us once again. I hope you enjoyed the episode. We've still got a fair bit to go, a lot of ground to cover. Tasmania is a wonderful place. We're really enjoying our stay. So once again, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the episode and we'll see you in the next one. Catch you later. So I guess there's much I never told you Like who I am, who I love where I've been and where I came from Grew up on 913 of Blue Rock Memories of six kids running around those halls And out in the California sunshine We wore no shoes through alleys in shattered windows throwing baseballs